the deadliest issue in the history of the world. Episode 3 Part 2 The 2011 study and the caloric lie continued. The problem with the Atwater system is that it ignores changes in digestibility, costs of digestion, and costs of immune defense, all of which are likely influenced by food processing. The result is nutritional inaccuracy. The example of dripping that I gave earlier, gave rise to my biggest question for the experiment. Did the study use 4 ounces of raw meat for both the raw dishes and the cooked dishes? The one mouse would get 4 ounces of raw meat and the other mouse would get 3 ounces of cooked meat. Did they also try 4 ounces of raw meat and an amount of meat that cooks down to 4 ounces of cooked meat, about 5.5 ounces? See how these are two completely different experiments. If I understand correctly, the 2011 study addressed this issue by intentionally conducted the experiment in a way where they could retain drippings. But still, this doesn't fully answer the question as to how it affects, let's say a bodybuilder's diet regimen, where he will be harmed by eating too much or too little or a 70-year-old quadriplegic diet regimen where she may be harmed by eating too much or too little or any other example. In other words, for everyday humans, who don't have the technology or any reason to keep the dripping juices with the food, the energy provided will be different between 4 ounce raw meat versus 4 ounces cooked meat and 4 ounce raw meat versus 3 ounces cooked meat. If I could run an experiment, I would try to factor in non-thermogenic bodily processing, that of which there is only one variable exception, of brown adipose tissue, which has a unique uncoupling protein. Then I would try to take into account exercise-associated thermogenesis, eat, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, meat, energy expended for everything that is not sleeping, eating or sports-like exercise. Diet-induced thermogenesis DIT. I would have to account for energy used in the metabolic process in my calorie number, but I would have to offset that by energy my body is using from previous eating. Let me explain. Because my body is not necessarily using the meat I am currently digesting to digest the meat. It is using meat energy from meat I previously digested to break down the current piece of meat. So, it would not be, x calories from raw meat, plus or minus, y calories from digestive process. But of course, it would all have to be taken into account by studying individual consumer energy balance and figuring out how much of the metabolic process is being fueled by previous food versus the current piece of food. Then there would be a further argument about the sustained metabolic effects of some foods. That is to say, some foods make your body burn calories long after you ate them, compared to other foods which do not. As you can see, one experiment begets another. I am putting the basic definitions of the following variables on the screen because the way Smarty Pants Rachel N. Carmody and her scientific team describe the variables might be too much for many people. 1. Heat-induced protein denaturation, 2. Loss of structural integrity, and 3 deactivation of microbes are expected to increase meat energy value, whereas, 4, dripping loss, 5, male lard reactions, 6, formation of protein covalent bonds, and toughening of muscle fibers should reduce it. The integrated effects of these mechanisms are unknown and can be understood only by studying consumer energy balance. In addition, to isolate the unique contributions of heat, the effects of cooking must be compared against the effects of non-thermal processing. The last two sentences from Dr. Rachel Carmody's quote are a call to action that the FDA has not answered. 
Dr. Carmody as recently as 2019, she made huge developments toward figuring out that gut microbes adapt quickly to changes in diet and preparation, particularly in starchy vegetables, which answers, to some degree, the further testing Dr. Carmody said would be necessary in 2011. Scientists have recently discovered that different diets, say, high-fat versus low-fat, or plant-based versus animal-based, can rapidly and reproducibly alter the composition and activity of the gut microbiome, where differences in the composition and activity can affect everything from metabolism to immunity to behavior. Although this has been obvious for years, Dr. Carmody of course has to go out and prove it, which she has began doing. She also has to prove each and every little thing sometimes, so any variable being altered, added, or subtracted could require a whole new study. But who else is doing these tests and what is taking so long? Where, as in at what companies, governments, etc., are these tests and experiments being done, if at all? Where are the results? The implementation. Who is performing them? Are we sure they are asking the right question? Where is the United States Department of Agriculture, USDA, and the United States Food and Drug Administration, FDA, on this and why aren't they doing anything? Isn't this something we should be pouring money into as a people and particularly tax dollars because of the effects it will have on society as a whole? Some people care about nutrition because a doctor tells them they have to. Let's say they have diabetes or are fighting cancer, if they cannot rely on the nutrition label, what is their remedy? Furthermore, our obesity problem, at least in the USA, is as bad as it has ever been and is getting worse. Well, what the hell do you think outright allowing lies on packaging has done to help our obesity problem? Nothing, and it is probably the cause of many obesity problems, which is a reason for sky-high insurance premiums, hospital room and staff shortages, especially during a pandemic emergency that targets obese people many of whom count calories, and the list goes on. In other words, fix the nutrition system now and it will save billions of lives in the future. So I ask how is the calorie still the system we blindly use over 11 years later? I haven't figured out yet how there could be such a poor exercise of judgment by food authorities, I can only tell you those poor decisions by health officials have created. The deadliest issue in the history of the world. Episode 4 is next in the playlist, or you can click in the bottom left of this video to get there.